of destiny. Four uh, statements that would help us to understand what particular person or thing in their future. Now when we talk about destiny, we talk about things that will happen in your life. In other words, those things will of necessity take place. Secondly, it is another angle, the hidden power believed to control future events of a person. Now, in other words, we talk of salient, salient uh, 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 events or, or, or power uh, that is responsible to propel one to experience their destiny. In other words, your destiny, as we will see later, your destiny is predetermined. But now, these, these salient features, these salient things must happen in your life to propel you towards experiencing your destiny. Destiny also refers to predetermined course of events. Now, in other words, somebody has predetermined in French. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, I'm like, <laughs> predetermined means before it happens, it is already determined. Amen. Right? Now, the last statement that will help us understand it is something that is preordained. A, a preordained part of your life. Now, pre predetermined, it, it's not stronger than preordained. When something is ordained, in other words, it is sealed. It is unchangeable. It is a part that has been ordained before you. That is destiny. Now, the book of Jeremiah, don't know whether you refer to Jeremiah, but Jeremiah is one book. In the beginning, you find the question of destiny applied. And throughout the book of Jeremiah, you, you, you see, you hear the prophet developing that theme of destiny. Let us start <coughs> by mentioning um, this verse, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It is in the first 10 of popularverses.com. A popular verse indeed. But many people don't understand it because they read it in isolation from its own context. Now quickly, let us see. Let us see uh, what is the context of Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Now, this is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and uh, to, um, to the priests. The prophets and all the other people, Nebuchadnezzar, are carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Jeremiah writes a letter. This, this, um, uh, uh, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It's part of a letter that Jeremiah writes to the exiles. These people are in exile. They are taken by Nebuchadnezzar. Now, the prophet is saying to them, this is what, verse 4, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says to all those I get it into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now who is I carry? Who, who, is, who is carrying who here? Huh? Who, who is, who is, who, who carrying who, who where? God carries, eh? It says here, now, in, 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 in one scripture, God calls Nebuchadnezzar my servant. How can you call, how can you call a foreign uh, emperor, an oppressor, how can you call him my servant? In other places, he is my lord. You know, lord to punish. Now, Jeremiah writes, writes to the, the exiles. He says, the Lord has carried you. The Lord has carried you to exile. Right? Now verse 5. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Now these people are in a foreign land. This is a land they don't want to be. But Jeremiah says, this is what God is saying. Build houses, settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your 
daughters in marriage. Verse 7. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have don't curse the city. Yeah. When you are don't curse Babylon, you must bless. You must bless them. You must seek the peace of the city. Verse 8. Yes, this is what the Lord the Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. There are people who are prophesying. There are people who are saying, this is the wrong place. After a year, the Lord will carry you back to Jerusalem. Jeremiah says, don't listen to them. That's prophesying lies to them. Right? It says, verse 9, they are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. It will not happen in one year. It will not happen in five years. Or it will take 70 years. Now listen to verse 11, the one that we like, that we quote out of context. Right? In Luke 22, verse 22. 
27. I'm going to be very quick. The son of man, Jesus, after having traveled, not the least last of all the disciples, he says, he <coughs> says to them, the son of man will come as it has been decreed, but woe to the man who betrays him. They began to question the disciples among themselves, which of them it might be who would do this? Verse 24, a dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. Little background, Jesus tells the disciples when they were having the last supper, I'm going away. I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to die. After Jesus told them, they it's a dispute. Huh? Clever. They disputed. The Greek word says there was sharp disagreement among them. Because they wanted to know who is going to take over this mega church. Who was going to be the successor? Is it going to be Peter? Is it going to be John? Or James. Jesus overhears them saying that. You know what? If you know your destiny, if you know God's purpose about your life, you will not have anything against another person's success or prosperity. The reason that you entertain her, you entertain her feelings of discontentment in your heart against another person, against their success. It is because you are not sure about your destiny. And Jesus is saying here, these things should not be in your midst. They should be amongst the Gentiles. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest and the one who rules like the one who serves. I don't care about positions. I don't care about titles. What I care about is to fulfill the destiny that God has predetermined, has preordained for my life. What I want
wife told us that you got married. You, well, do we say, did she say that? Yeah. yeah. You know what? Find a place to do in the church. Stop to be a church. Go on. Stop to be a page woman. Find something to do in the church. For your destiny is tied to servitude in the church. I want to believe that each and every one of you, without exception, you are unique. And God has predetermined your life. God has preordained your life. What you must do is find a place to serve in the church. Now, I think Mark Martin said it very well on Friday. As I said, only service a high time. He said it very well. That things will not happen when you are stationary. Things will happen when you take a step of faith. What is God saying to you? Find a place to serve in the church, in the kingdom of God. John chapter 6, the miracle of the multiplication of the laws of prayer. Close to 15,000 people were fed by five loaves of bread. A young man had those five loaves and two fish. And <coughs> a multitude were hungry. And they brought the five loaves and two fish to Jesus. I want to ask a question, when they listen, at what point sure. did the bread and the fish multiply? Yeah. Uh, huh? <laughs> at what point did the bread and the fish start to multiply? The bread and fish did not multiply when they brought the bread to Jesus. Yes. The bread did not multiply when Jesus prayed over the fish. Yes. The bread started to multiply when they started to distribute uh, all the Oh, we thank to Jesus. We bless your holy name, oh Father. Let's stand on our feet. You are not an accident. You are at the center of God's will. Oh, I want to pray today. We want to pray today. Maybe you could be confused. What is the purpose of God upon my life? We want to pray today. What is my destiny? You are confused. What is my destiny? We want to pray for you today. And we are not having a magical formula. What we are showing to you is that find out your place and find out your destiny in the church. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That certain things that may seem obscure in your life. That certain things which might seem very difficult in your life. But I want to say to you today, God never creates a mistake. God never creates confusion. And we want to pray together. I'm not going to call you to the front. But I just want to pray for you, where you are. As we have our eyes closed. If you want to recommit your life to Jesus today. You want to just, God, I just want to recommit my life to you today. Deep down in your heart, you know very well things are not right in your life. You need help. You need Jesus in your life. If you, this is you. Just want to recommit your life to Jesus. Just lift up your hand. I want to recommit my life to Jesus today. This is your time. This is your season. I want to recommit my life to Jesus. I want to make things right. Just lift up your hand. Wherever you are, I'm going to pray for you. You want to make things right. Lift it very high, please. Lift it very high. Don't be afraid. Is there any other person? I want to dedicate. Is there any other? I want to.